Hi, and welcome to Century Ostinato Strings Advanced Patterns. This is the follow up to our first Ostinato library where you had all the beautiful strings, violins, violas, cellos, and basses, and you can play them in 8th, 16, 30 second notes and really do these beautiful ostinatos with them uh, in velocities and so forth. But we realized that there's a lot of other syncopations you can do in music. Sometimes you want more advanced patterns. You don't just want da da but you want to create more elaborate rhythms that requires a certain mixture of different types of short notes going into longer notes and all that stuff. Essentially, all the stuff you can't do with multi singles. That's what this library is about. And dare I say, it's completely audio or super realistic when you use it. Um, hopefully, the demo you just heard was a little example of how you can use the library. Um, it uses like seven different patterns, I think. Um, all together with our other instruments, allowing you to do completely realistic orchestration as well. So in this video, I just want to take you into the piece you just heard. I want to go deep into the DAW and show you more about the different orchestration techniques, what kind of layering, what kind of instruments I'm using, and just give you an idea about what it takes to create a little composition like this. Um, it took a few days to write. I'm a little bit rusty in my orchestration right now, so it took a few days to brush it off. But uh, yeah, I'll see you in the DAW. Welcome to our new Ostinato Strings Advanced Patterns. Right, let's just dive straight into the composition. I'm gonna play a little snippet of the composition and then I'm gonna break it down and we're gonna do that through the entire composition so you can really get a feeling for all the layering. Let's start here with the first part playing the Clara Woodwinds. So before we even get into the ostinato strings, it actually plays these beautiful woodwinds. And we've gotten a lot of questions lately in regards to century when we are going to release the century woodwinds. We are working on them in different capacities, but don't forget that we already have a beautiful woodwind collection out there, starting here with the Clara flutes. We also got this beautiful um, English horn here. It's just gorgeous. And then I'm also using our H or acoustic grand ensembles glockenspiel. This is one of my favorite sounds. This is seven glockenspiels played in a hall. Just such a gorgeous ethereal sound. In many ways, it's the way that glockenspiel should always have sounded, in my opinion. Um, I'm also using um, a little bit of our wind chimes from the same collection. And then I'm also using these harmonic tremolos from our center strings, second violins. They just build up this beautiful sort of textual thing and combined it all sounds like this. All right, let's hold it right there. Um, in this first part here, I'm playing our Sensor Arsenato Strings Advanced Patterns Opus pattern here. Uh, if you look here, when I double click, you're gonna notice all these different patterns here, which can all beautifully be controlled with velocity. And we also got them in round robin fashion so you can play them in repeated notes. Check this out, let me just play here on the keys. We also got speed controls in case you want to do like triplets. And while the ostinato pattern is playing, I'm also playing a little bit here with our anthology legato one, uh, one of my favorite legatos of all time. It just has an incredible William shine, if you will. But it can also be very mellow. You can see here, um, I'm ceasing the dynamics a little bit. So we start sort of very subtle and then it sort of goes up in volume, becomes more extravagant.
there's a notable French horn section here, which is coming from our sensory brass French horn six section. Sensory brass actually contains both one, two, six, and 12 French horn sections here. The six is one of my favorites because it's so lyrical and soft in the sort of lower dynamics, and then you can really make it shine and bite on the other ones. A little later in this first section here, I'm introducing another string pattern that goes like this. And you can see here, I took the bass out of this particular section. Um, I didn't want it to bleed in with the cellos. I wanted a little less of that bass definition. Uh, one of the cool things, just like our anthology series, is that you can choose whatever section you want to play here in real time. Things will load and unload as you do that. Um, you can also place the panning and all that stuff. Um, it's really a neat way of sort of designing the sound. You don't always want all the sections to play together. Um, there'll be certain bleed overs you want to avoid in terms of frequencies. But let me trigger these two patterns here standalone. And check this out, it's not only that you have beautiful velocity controls, but you also have round robin on them. Let's move on here to the third movement of the demo, which is also using a third pattern. So this particular pattern here is more triplet based. As you can see, this one is actually velocity based. And we offer both options in the library. So if you want your mod wheel control over dynamics, you can do that. If you want to do velocity, we have different patches for that. Um, we also have auxiliary patches that are designed around specific microphones and section mixing and all that. So there's a variety of different variations of all the different patterns here. But this triplet here is such a good example of things that you can't do with multi samples. There's actually interconnected legato even at a single note basis. The notes are connecting this way. That's why it sounds so fluent when you do it this way. Let's move on here to the fourth movement of the demo. So in this part here, I'm using the same patterns as we started out with.
And this is just a good example, again, with things you can't do with multi samples. Century probably has the largest collection of short notes ever done from different types of staccatismos up to staccatos and macados and a huge amount of round robin and velocity controls. And yet, these things have this interconnected legato nature that is just super hard to do. You might also be noticing I'm using some TikTok clicky sort of modern sounds on top of it. These are coming from my HyperTools Neo 2 collection, TikTok Rhythms, really effective to create that sort of higher range rhythmic layer in the composition. I'm also using another French horn here. This is from our Century Brass collection, our two French horns with a whole lot of reverb on them. Sometimes I just like it with like that if you want to create something more like ethereal. I'm also doubling this particular part with our clair flute. But on top of that, to build up the brass even more, I'm using our 66 trombone sustain patch. It just helps create a little more fatness in the bottom. If you're ever looking for the fattest brass ever sampled, there is no comparison to our 66 trombones. Sure, you can add with our 66 tubas on top, but for me, this sound here is so clean. Is also the sound that I'm using in that really beefy bass proportion of the demo. I'm using the macados from our 66 trombones. It is, for me, the ultimate bass sound. And in this part here of the demo, I'm using a, a snippet from one of our upcoming libraries, which is our Studio Vocals Operatic Soprano. Um, the library is absolutely massively deep sampled. We have six different types of legatos. In this particular demo here, I'm using our free syllable legato, meaning that every time you do a legato transition on the keyboard, the vowel changes, so it's a new type of word. And all combined, it sounds something like this. Towards the middle of the demo, we get into this super elaborate, mega beefy kind of part. Um, let me just trigger the pattern first here from our ostinato strings. And the patterns are so nimble. Uh, let me just try to improvise something here and change the time signature. Now there's one escapable part about this segment here and that's the trombone's macado that really, really helps like cut through the mix. And it's a good example of one of those things like where you need a section that big. You couldn't have done it with like six or even 12, the sort of normal big size. This is 66 playing in octaves here as so a times two. That would be 132 players per note. Another part um, I also want to share briefly is our century harps. You can see here that I'm sprinkling them um, throughout the composition. And uh, century harps is cool because it's actually two different harps that can either be played independently or together. Uh, one of the tricks John Williams used sometimes is to have two different harps placed in each side of the hall. And in this case here, you can see I've loaded different types of glissandos between harp one and harp two. So you really get that lush, beautiful type of harp glissando. It's really beautiful for transitions.
And this segment here is actually a good example of an alternative use of a pattern. Let me just try to trigger the normal pattern here in its full length. But you can also go like. And while we're at it, let me just try to demonstrate um, the different microphone positions as well here, starting with the mixed microphone. And the closed mic. And the decker tree. And the white microphones. So you can almost sort of dive through different perspectives. I really like uh, using close and decker together. Um, I'll pull down the decker a little bit so you get more definition on the front, but you get a little more of the room in the back. We also got attack and release controls if you want to dial in a little more sort of sweeping beginning. We have a set of convolution reverbs too if you want to get into that, and, and our Cares Effects 4 here um, if you want to build your rack of effects. But uh, for the purpose of this demo here, I didn't get into any of those uh, fancy features. Let me just um, try to trigger a proportionate demo here, just um, isolating the Claire Woodwinds uh, and the pattern here alone. Um, they're just so beautiful together. I'm also using a little bit from our Claire Alto flute uh, in this particular section here. It's so gorgeous. I can feel the love in there. I can feel the passion from the player. A lot of samples tend to get static. And if you ever wonder why some of our demos sound more alive perhaps than a lot of other things, it's because we spent an enormous amount of time trying to get the right emotion in the session. Sometimes we have to go back and redo everything because we didn't get enough soul and emotion inside of the sessions. And speaking of soul and emotion, the theme for me in this composition triggered in the beginning and then modulated through, but it really comes to fruition here about three minutes into the composition where I'm combining the 66 trombones uh, with our six horns here. It's just a beautiful, beefy, brass dream come true. Um, it's been a decade and a half for me looking for the right sound in terms of finding the right bassiness with the trombones and the right sort of bright expressiveness and beautiful clarity of the French horns as well. Uh, full dynamic controls of both of them, but in this case here, true fortifortissimo. And then the demo ends with this sweet combination between our ostinato strings, advanced patterns, a little bit of counterpoint coming from our six French horns, and then the main melody coming from our Claire Woodwinds. And even a piece like this here, it's pretty simple, but there are some things in it that help sort of bring the orchestration to life. First of all, when you use all our orchestral products, think about dynamics, how you can weave in and out of them. For example, here, if we follow the strings here, you can see that the modulation is fairly low here in terms of just 
creating that sort of supportive um, counterpoint melody that's uh, between the French horn and the strings playing. So they don't need to be loud because they're just running in the background to sort of support the main theme. Whereas with the melody, um, you can notice that there's a little more going on dynamically here. You can see that the mod wheel is used a little more expressively because we're into sort of the melody territory now. Um, and that's important. I'm also using a little bit from our 8D oboe, uh, one of my favorite libraries actually. Um, it was a library that Colin recorded many, many, many years ago. And um, it was a quick session. He just happened to get a player that was very, very good with emotion and all that stuff. And when you start combining and layering the different things here, um, you get the right sort of sound. Uh, one thing to really keep in mind when you orchestrate, and I think a lot of people sort of forget that because we get so used to the computer just being this amazing pad machine, is that think about colors, what goes together, what doesn't go together. In this case here, we got the clair flute, the oboe, we got our anthology violins and violas legato one and our glockenspiel playing together just to generate this tiny phrase. And sometimes um, it's not just playing it on the keyboard. There are times where you have to sit and fiddle a little bit with the CCs and move notes around. I don't always get it right on the keys. So for that reason, I sometimes have to sit and do a little bit of extra adjustments. Um, one of the beautiful things about our pattern library here, our ostinato patterns, is that it actually just works straight on the keys. The synchronization of the strings is super tight. Uh, you might have tried other libraries in the past where you're like, mm, it doesn't really fit to my tempo and all that stuff. This one just works. Everything sits exactly where it needs. Let me just wrap the video up here by just um, playing a couple of different patterns here on the keyboard live so you can just see how easy it is to use. And let me just make sure here that all the sections are loaded. Yeah, we got bass, cello, violas, first and second violins all together.